for the 12th year in succession to pay honour to this sacred place, really. This place which is very special to the people of Carlow and very special to Ireland as a nation because it is about remembering and respecting the memory of the million people who died during Angurtha Mall. Sometimes, you know, you go to a place and you don't need to say a lot. You just feel it. You know, where that building is, is being built now, there was a workhouse who started in 1840. It was to support 800 people who were poor in the area. And at its peak, there was 1,700 people living in a house there. They're our ancestors. They're not different from us. They're us. They're us. And I kind of think, you know, this place was a place of sadness and despair and horror what 170 years ago and now it's a place of hope it's a place where young people get an education where you can be whatever you want to be and i think that's quite amazing and that 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 shows us that hunger and famine doesn't have to be okay the famine here was because of potatoes but it was also because a small group of people owned the wealth owned the power, owned the food, basically, the distribution of food. That's still happening all over the world. When they were building that building, they found a mass grave, and it was a grave from 1847. It was a grave of people who died of cholera. Here, cholera, cholera, here. And they're our people. Just feel it, just, and respect it. These are our ancestors. the sustainable development goals and global citizenship education we have to ask why it's needed in the first place and I think often the global stats are really kind of overwhelming and very intangible and very hard to actually wrap our heads around but if we reduced the entire world's 8 billion people down to just a village of 100 these are the kind of stats that we're talking about so 99 people out of the 100 will be breathing unclean air, and that's from the World Health Organization, and that's only set to increase. So what we're talking about there is the likelihood that people are going to develop things like respiratory issues. 28 people would have to drink unclean and unsafe water, and that's an issue not only in the Global South, but actually an issue in Ireland as well. So my colleague Alice can't drink from her tap in Dundalk. The water is often coming out brown, so she has to always have bottled water at home. 25 people do not have regular access to food. And what's really important about this is that there is three times the amount of food that we need in the world. The issue is access and distribution. One person out of the 100 would be actively dying from starvation and that number is only set to increase, and um, particularly with the increase in conflicts and militarisation. 14 people would not be able to read or write and one in four adults in Ireland have issues around literacy, whether it's technological literacy or numerical. This is an issue that's very much prevalent in Ireland as well. 40 would not have personal freedom and what we're referring to there is whether you feel you can actually freely criticise your government and I think maybe the most alarming stat is the next one. So one person out of the 100 would have twice the wealth as the rest of humanity. And that's only set to increase. 25 people are living through violent conflict and that number is also set to increase. Nine people would not have access to electricity and 36 would not attain secondary school level education. 
and Gorta Moor has been referred to as the greatest social disaster anywhere in Europe in the 19th century. The uh, impact, as in Gaza, in human terms, is almost off the scale. A population of some 9 million on the eve of Angort Moor was halved over the space of a generation. More than a million people died of starvation. People were evicted from their homes, 200,000 families or 1 million people. Millions were forced to emigrate on so-called coffin ships, again, because so many died from disease. A human-made disaster of almost unimaginable proportions, just as we've seen or are seeing in Gaza today. One point of connection is colonialism, and more particularly settler colonialism, as the connecting link or shared cause of both humanitarian catastrophes. And by colonialism, we mean control over a country for purposes of extracting that country's wealth or resources. The natives are eliminated, displaced, marginalized, disappeared and so on. The theme today really was to do action, to not just to learn about what's important in the world, but to take the knowledge that you've been given and to put that into action and to try and make a difference because we're learning that even one person can do that and together we can create the world that we really want to live in. Sometimes I think we kind of give up and say, oh, well, that's the way of the world. No, it doesn't have to be like this. What kind of world do we want to build? Like, the, like how crazy is that, that we could actually build a world? We could actually decide this is the kind of world we want to live in and this is not the kind of world we want to live in. And that's empowerment, you know, and that's what today was about. So I'm like buzzing, <laughs> really am buzzing. I think that this is a really important formula that we should continue and that we want to see grow from strength to strength. And the important thing is that it is rooted in on Gorthamore and that's where we as Irish people need to remain rooted, remembering where we have come from as a people. The horror that was on Gorthamore and the unjust structures that brought that about. And if we remain rooted in that, then we will inevitably express solidarity with people around the world who experience similar situations in today's world. I suppose we were good for a while And I found that there's no use in crying Yet the tears roll down by my spine When you danced for me on that last day In your warm arms I longed to stay But I was onward bound either way And at the time I just couldn't say
Sun.